All right, imagine you're locked in a room with Albert Einstein. He's back from the dead or in simulation or whatever. Now, unless you are a world-leading theoretical physicist, he's gonna be able to talk about stuff that you just fundamentally cannot comprehend. So this is a phenomenon or a concept called cognitive horizon. So Albert Einstein, his cognitive horizon is bigger in some directions than yours with respect to mathematics and theoretical physics and so on. Now, that's not to say that uh, your cognitive horizon is not larger than his in another domain. You might be better at art or uh, social uh, engagement, such as emotional intelligence. Now, here's the thing. Another way to think about cognitive horizon is imagine a goldfish or a pigeon. Your cognitive horizon completely subsumes um, the cognitive horizon of a goldfish or a pigeon. In pretty much every way, except probably flight, you know, like an intuitive understanding of flight, that is probably the only place that a pigeon's cognitive horizon supersedes yours. Otherwise, in every other context, verbal, semantic, mathematical, conceptual, in every other respect, your cognitive horizon is so far beyond that of, of, a, of a pigeon's or a goldfish's, that no amount of communication will ever get that pigeon or that goldfish up to your level. It is, they are constitutionally incapable of understanding you on your terms. Now, how does this relate to artificial intelligence? This is what a lot of people are afraid of, uh, where the idea is that perhaps one day, through iterative self-improvement and exponential progress, it is possible that machine intelligence, that the cognitive horizon of machine intelligence could completely subsume all human cognitive abilities. That the cognitive horizon of machines will be so far beyond ours that there's just no way that we could ever understand them. Not unless we evolve. Not unless we use genetic engineering and accelerated evolution and you know uh, implants to drastically expand our cognitive horizon. Now, there are psychology and neuroscience studies out there um, that kind of inspired this line of thinking originally. So one study, I think it was from Stanford, it was many years ago and I haven't been able to find it, so I could be misremembering. But basically, this study set out to ascertain whether or not people could accurately gauge the intelligence of other people. And what they found was that as long as the, the judger, so like, you know, the, the test subject, as long as they were at or above the intelligence level of the person that they were assessing, people are actually a pretty good judge of someone else's intelligence. Now, uh, the opposite is true. If the subject that you're looking at, so the, the, the person whose intelligence you're gauging, if they're substantially above yours, then you actually often perceive them as less intelligent. If someone's just a little bit more intelligent than you, you can generally say, aha, I recognize that this person is smarter than me. And so that accuracy tails off drastically once there are a full one or two standard deviations of intelligence above you. And that is because their reasoning, their world model is outside of your cognitive horizon. So the question becomes, will machines ever get to that point where no human can understand them? Now, obviously we already live in a world where there are people whose cognitive horizon supersedes our own in many respects. So for instance, math. I decided to quit math when I got to differentials or what I think uh, in England you guys call integrals. I was just like, yeah, I don't care that much. I'd rather study other stuff. So calculus and theoretical physics is beyond my cognitive horizon right now. But there's something interesting in this. I said it's beyond my cognitive horizon right now. Human brains are highly plastic, which means that with the right training, with the right education, and with the right effort, I can actually expand my cognitive horizon. So one of the things that we can intuit from this, or that we can derive, is that... Uh, cognitive horizon is not necessarily fixed. Now, obviously, when you look across species, the cognitive horizon of your cat or dog is biologically constrained 
uh, you know, evolutionarily genetically constrained by, for instance, um, the size and shape of their brain and their skull, uh, probably the neurotransmitters and other signals um, that their brain uses to shape itself. But on the other hand, when you look at the fact that Neanderthal man had a brain that was 30% larger than ours, we are smarter, yet our brain is smaller. So this leads me to believe, this is pure speculation on my part, but I suspect that human brains actually came up with an algorithm that was better at approximating any cognitive function. And so if we have basically the, you know, Turing complete version of bio biological brains, then it's entirely possible that with the right tweaks, you know, either in the way that you learn, the way that you train, maybe some nootropics, it might be possible that our brains already possess the fundamental capability to approximate any informational process, any internal representation that is possible to, that, that can be, uh, that, can, that, is, that can exist. Sorry, I didn't say that well. So if you're not familiar with the concept of Turing complete, a Turing complete machine is a computer that can do any operation that any other computer can do. So if there is a universal set of cognitive abilities or basic cognitive operations, if we have that as humans, then that means that, you know, that no machine can ever be beyond our cognitive horizon. Now that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be faster in the same way that computers have always been faster than us at math. That's why we invented them. That's why they're called computers. Um, but that might mean that any set of reasoning anything that a machine can understand, humans might already have the intrinsic biological capacity to understand. This is, a, again, it's a personal hypothesis, it's a pet theory. I have no idea. Um, but this question will be really huge in the coming years. And one last thing that I wanna point out that I wanna leave you with is machines have learned intelligence backwards. So what I mean by that is math is one of the last things that humans have really figured out. So we've we figured out moving through space, you know, robotics, uh, you know, high friction environments. We figured that out first. We figured that out when we were still amphibians and fish. Then fast forward a few million years, then we figured out language. And then we figured out writing. And then we finally figured out math. And once we got really good at math, that's when everything changed. Now computers have been going backwards. They've basically been evolving backwards. Computers started with math. Then they figured out logic, like actual like formal logic, or you might say that math and logic are the same thing. So then they figured out vision and language and writing and creativity. And so then uh, one of the last things that they have to figure out is how to navigate the world. So when you lay out the number of intellectual things that we have figured out versus machines, they're almost going exactly in reverse. So I don't know what that means, but it was an interesting uh, trend that I noticed. So thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, am I off base? Do you agree, disagree? What did I miss? Um, I learned a lot from you guys in the comments. So yeah, cheers, have a good one, bye.